Hey, everybody. Hope you were able to see that little video. This is Tracy with TiaraCast. And um, we, posted that. we posted that when, um, hold on just a second here. We posted that right after we were able to reopen um, after quarantine shut us down for a few months last spring. Um, we kind of closed down on March 18th like everybody. And, um, and then we were able to um, stay open just to sell existing inventory. And then um, around sometime in May, they let us start manufacturing again. So that's the video that we posted and we're really happy. Um, that we were able to do that. And I am super happy that all of you are here. Um, hopefully you saw Andrew's video. He kicked off the Great Beat Extravaganza at 9 a.m. this morning, Pacific time, and um, did a great video showing a bunch of um, treatment options for wooden pendants that they sell in their shop. And um, it was fun. And this whole thing has been just such a uplifting collaboration to put this together. So um, we're super happy that all of you are here. And um, I do have a couple other people joining me this morning. I have Julie and Kirsten. And um, Julie, Julie, many of you, well, maybe not all these viewers today, because this is sort of a new audience for us. But Julie has been with the company for 40 years. The company is 42 years old. And she's been with the company almost from the beginning and she is our sales rep. And um, usually when we go to bead shows and stuff, Julie's always with us. So so many of the vendors know her and um, she's a delight to work with. And we also have Kirsten. Kirsten is our new product development manager and um, she's been with the company for about five years and she just took on the role. I'm gonna let Julie and Kirsten tell you guys more about that. Good morning, all you Good cool morning. cats and kittens. I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> um, my, my name is Kirsten, and I, um, I've met some of you before, but I'm really excited to be with you today. I am lucky enough to be stepping into the role of product development manager for TierraCast, and it is absolutely a dream job for me. Um, what that means is I get to decide what TierraCast is going to bring to all you guys next. And um, I got involved with the company. I've been a metalsmith for over 10 years now. And I kind of call myself like a craft fangirl. Uh, I eat, sleep, and breathe jewelry. I'm so excited to be part of this awesome event because a lot of the um, other people who are presenting are people that I've followed for years, they're some of my heroes, and I'm really glad to be with all of you other makers. And um, I think I'll tell you guys a little bit about my journey at Tierra Cast. So, like Tracy said, I've been here for about five years. Um, I actually came on a tour with Alan, who is um, the co a co owner of Tierra Cast and also the product old product development manager, that guy with the cool little haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. um, so I came and I did this little tour when I moved to Sonoma County, and I was completely blown away. Uh, some of you have been lucky enough to come on the tour. I know that we're going to put a link up of the tour so you guys can kind of see a little bit more in depth. But the manufacturing process and the warmth of the people who work here and how it's like a family really blew me away. So I begged him for months. I begged him for a job, any job. And I took a job in customer service here at Tierra So if you guys called, you know, five years ago, there's a good chance that you talked to me on the phone. Uh, it was really obvious to me that Tierra Cast was a very unique company. Uh, so what really drew me to Tierra Cast and what continues to amaze me about this company is that Steve and Alan, who are the two owners and the founders, are really, they're makers at heart. Every single person that works here is a maker. They started in, in the 1970s and really with a passion for craft and a passion for manufacturing and a dedication to making a place where all the crew feels like family. Everyone here is an artisan and they really wanted to make parts to help other makers 
with their business and to provide some unique findings. And what's really special about us is that from the beginning of every single part to the end of every single part, someone here touches it. Everything is made in America. We do the design here. We do the manufacturing here and we do all the finishing here. Um, it's a pretty unique thing. And I think that this company is very special. Aw, agreed. Agreed. And we're <laughs> glad to have you, Kirsten, bring in this exciting new blood into this role. I think it's a biggie. I'd love to tell them about our process. Yeah. Before you do, before you do mm -hmm. I just want to mention this picture that I've been showing. Mm -hmm. This is okay. See, it's backwards for me, so I'm unskilled. Crazy. I uh, it's looking great to me. The one, the, the one with the beard is Steven Tierra, and he retired. It was it two years ago? Yes, 2018. And Alan was going to retire at the end of this year, but when um, we got closed down with COVID, he just never came back. And what was, <laughs> what was the joke that they said it would take an act of Congress to get him to um, leave? Yeah. So he yeah. Did. And he was the head of product development when he was here. So we needed somebody to step up and that was Kirsten. So this is a kind of her coming out party. Yep. Yep. I'm and a such a, in front of hundreds of people. And I wish we had a picture of Sarah because Sarah is our general manager and she's been here for almost 40 years and um, she is steering the ship now. Um, along with Kirsten. So the boys are gone <laughs> and the girls are in the house. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Kirsten, show, tell us about the manufacturing. Are you going to take right. us on a, a mini tour or are you just going to? Yeah, well, um, you'll see. It's a surprise, Tracy. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> And I'm going to be, a, I'm going to try and keep us on the time too, because we have an hour and a half for this. And, um, some of that, I have two tutorials um, lined up, so so get going. Okay, I'll do it <laughs> quickly so you can get to the fun stuff with Tracy, although this is the fun stuff too. So like I said, every um, part that TRCast makes starts here. So what that usually looks like is sometimes we'll get design ideas from customers. We've actually made, we've had some of our best parts from a customer going, why don't you guys make this? Um, sometimes we have extremely talented employees like Tracy who <laughs> make sketches, right? You guys might recognize some of these as some of our Halloween parts. Um, I'll brag about Tracy really quick. A lot of people know that she's extraordinarily talented, but what they don't know is that she's actually extraordinarily talented in all different aspects of art. So she's an incredible 2D artist as well. Awesome. Um, sometimes we have a mood board, kind of like a guiding mood board. There you go. And so, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and then sometimes we're lucky enough to get to work with some of our friends. So I'm going to show you guys a part that uh, we actually had Jill McKay, who is another presenter, design for us um and it's a lovely part hi, and she might be watching yeah, to say hi. Hopefully Jill's watching for her shout out so i am going to take you guys to the pattern room and kind of do a uh, cooking show style walkthrough and we hope that the wi-fi holds out that her signal holds out we do um so this is my office so i'm not going to show you guys too much because there's a lot of secrets in here <laughs> but I'm going to walk through to the pattern room and you guys can see. Okay, don't get nauseous. And this, this is, is, a, this is where the magic happens. Well, and the, the magic happens all over the shop, but that's where the magic starts. I think it's important, an uh, interesting thing that this is the sh uh, the um, facility where that we've had since 1978. Wait, Kirsten, will you stand back up for a second and just pan your workbench? Because that went super fast. There's Kirsten's workbench. She tidied it up for us. Maybe not. <laughs> it, it never looks this clean. I can guarantee that it's never been this clean before. So um, our patterns are made a couple different ways. 
uh, usually we make them using traditional kind of metal smithing technique and that's kind of my area of specialty. Um, and then sometimes we will employ the use of CAD. Um, CAD is computer aided design for you guys that are not familiar. So sometimes we'll get a CAD file in and this is a part that's based off of the part that Jill designed for us. So you'll see it has this little sprue on it. So the sprue is where the metal will enter the part when we get them cast from CAD. And I'm just gonna do a little cleanup situation so you guys can what see. What is that metal, Kirsten? Oh, so this master is made out of sterling silver. Sometimes they're made out of other metals like a brass or a bronze, but generally they're made out of sterling silver, the first generation. So is this, is this technically the master or no? That's just the CAD model. This is, um, it will be the master or it's the first part of getting to the master. Okay. So something that's important is um, CAD is an awesome tool, but it never will replace the hands of a craftsperson, in my opinion. The CAD is very helpful, but we always have to do modifications to give it a little extra love. I'm almost good. I, there's, you guys, we're using StreamYard for our stream, and I'm seeing so many comments and so many people saying hello, but... Um, StreamYard doesn't give me the uh, capability of actually responding to those, so just please know that we're seeing your comments, and um, afterwards, I will go in and respond to every question and um, make sure you guys find out what you wanted to know. So, and thank you for all your comments. And Kate, Kate Richburg is admiring your sawing. You should know that, Kirsten. <laughs> thank you. It's real life here. It's real life. <laughs> Kate and um, so. To get a I've bit. taken off the sprue for the most part. I don't know if you can see that. Well, Where's you're frozen. Camera? There's my camera. So I've taken off the sprue for the most part. I'm going to use a grinding wheel um, to just take off the rest. So real quick. We can hear it. We can't see it, but we can hear it. Oh, there ah. we go. So Kirsten and Kate have been promising to do a bench, uh, dueling benches, and that hasn't happened yet, but no. we're hopeful. We really want to schedule that. I'm dying to do that. Kate and I are, we are uh, kindred spirits. Yes, you are. All right, so I'm back. We're going to do this, like I said, cooking show style. So this is kind of what the master will look like, you know, in real life. I do a little bit more futzing. In fact, I have the real master here. This is what the real master looks like. So pretty close. We're waiting. You're frozen and we're waiting for you to come back again. Are you back in your office? Yes. Okay. Well, just keep talking us through it. Yeah, we can't okay. see you. Uh-oh. Well, that's okay. You don't need to see me. <laughs> well, actually you do. Can you tell me when I come back? <laughs> Julie, while we're waiting for Kirsten to come back, do you want to um, say anything more about like the history of the company, like way back? Yeah, you know, um, we're 42 years, 42 years in business. Um, we talked already about Stephen and Alan and they're kind of moved on. <laughs> and um, they're still in the background, though. It's very important to know that they're still there for us. They're on the board and they are guiding us still also. It's the board of directors, so they're still directing. They're not, yeah, yes. So, yeah, <laughs> ah, exactly. So, um, and they're, um, so I, and I started uh, four years ago. So, I, I love to say that Tara here because I'm two years old, which is a little baby. Aww. Uh, and I've done many, many, many jobs too. Oh, Kirsten's back. Kirsten's back. Yay. I'm back. Okay. Hey. I think everyone's done a lot of jobs. Tracy, haven't you had a bunch of different jobs here as well? Um, well, I started off in customer service and um, 
and then I started kind of helping. We that was at that point we had a graphic designer in house. Right now we contract out with one, but we had a graphic designer in house, which some of you know his name was Chris Pomeroy. Um, and I started helping the graphic designer with marketing stuff and started helping to support show efforts when everybody was getting ready to go to shows. Um, and it kind of morphed into now I'm like the content marketer and, and pretty much do all the marketing. Um, we do have a graphic designer that we contract with and she does all our real pretty stuff. Um, Tracy has more jobs at PR cast than anybody, in my opinion. <laughs> Way it's but a broad thing. Yeah. Let me see she has so much energy that she can do two people. She's like two people. I've yeah. spent an afternoon in her office and I'm exhausted when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys were at about, well, it's like 1217. What else do we have to say about the company, the history? Um, Kirsten, did you have more you wanted to add about your? Yeah, I have a little bit more process. If I have time, I can talk about it. So, you know, we have a master here. So the thing about manufacturing is we take one part and we make millions of parts a lot of times. So what will happen next is that I will hand that master over to our master molder, Mario, who is fantastic. And he will make a casting, make multiple castings of them, about 30. And those are called production masters. And each one of those gets hand finished to perfection. So then what he'll do is he'll make a mold. So the molds come in two parts. They are made of soft rubber. So what he'll do next is he'll put he'll place each of these production masters around in a circle he will place these nuts here they're called pell nuts and what they do is they keep the mold from slipping apart in our casting machines from um, yeah <laughs> it really it really locks them tight and he'll cut a hole here and the hole is important because that's where the metal's going to go in. Um, so then what he'll do is he'll put them in a vulcanizer. So a vulcanizer is a machine that it will apply an extreme amount of pressure, uh, 6,000 to 7,000 pounds of pressure, and cook it at about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So once that happens, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> 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 Once that happens, um, our casters will get to work. And so what our casters will do is they use a, a machine that'll spin around. It'll spin this mold around and they will pour metal into the top. It'll enter this hole and it'll spray out the metal to create what we call trees. So they break them off by hand. It's really important. So each of these gates our molder cuts by hand and he cuts them really precisely so that it doesn't leave a, good, a big scar or anything like that. Um, so, Kirsten, your streaming is choppy, but what, so I just want to tell people what they're seeing is multiples of those little, those, that original piece she showed you of the pendant that was made for us by, uh, designed for us by Jill McKay. Now you're seeing pewter, pewter cast components of that piece. I won't get too much more into it because I could go, I could talk about manufacturing until the cows go home, come home. It's definitely my love. Um, but what I do want to tell people is that, so what we use is called Britannia pewter. And what it is, is it's a lead free pewter alloy, which is really cool. Um, I learned a lot about it yesterday and I learned <laughs> that it was invented in the 1700s, which is pretty cool to think about how many people have used this alloy before. Yes. Um, what's really cool about it is that it's flexible, but it's also very strong. So it is unique in that it allows us to create things like the crimpins which I think mm -hmm. that you'll be using later, which you can flush, but they stay strong. So it's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, it has a really low, so when our casters pour it in, it has a really low melting temperature, about 500 degrees. And I know that we are hoping that you would share your funny story about the pewter. Uh, well, a few years ago I was making pizza. So my oven was about to 425. Um, maybe it was it must have been hotter and I was 
slinging pizza into the oven and my bracelet flew off and landed in the bottom of the oven. And I was like, oh, crap. And I got, grabbed a pair of tongs and tried to get in there and get it. It was in the bottom of the oven. And by the time I could even get to it, all the little pewter pieces were little melted lumps. And but the glass, the lamp work beads looked great. They looked fine. But everything, and the brass chain was great, but all the pewter was little melted lumps. So <laughs> that's a good lesson. Don't cook your pewter and don't solder your pewter. Don't even try it. Because no, it's don't, gonna melt. don't solder your pewter. Um, somebody else commented um, that they didn't realize we were a USA company. Um, yeah, we are. So, yeah. Start to finish. I'm not seeing any comments, so I can't help you with that. <laughs> oh, bummer. Well, I, I already said, um, I'm keeping an eye on them. And I'm sorry, I can't respond to them and click up and stuff or respond. But I will after the video. I'll, I'll Somebody's commenting pewter pizza. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so when you're doing your projects, you're, <clears throat> I was I was here to help Tracy reading, uh, by reading the comments. So and well, what we can do, maybe, Julie, is when when we switch over to um, to the projects, which is going to be very shortly, um, you can back out of this meeting if you want and open up the Facebook page. I wonder if you can do it on the Great Beat Extravaganza page. And that way you could keep an eye on comments. But I can also see them here. I can't respond to them, but I can see them. So. so Darn it. Darn it. OK. Is, is that a, it for our, our history and manufacturing lesson? Yeah, I'll just go to the last the last part, which is to show you guys oh, that finish. this is the end result, Ooh. right? So gorgeous. this is our gold plate, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is my, my favorite. So that's the our 40 finish. That's our, just our pewter. Pewter can and look pewter. that good. Yeah. Yeah, the Britannia pewter is more lustrous than other mm -hmm. pewter alloys. Mm-hmm. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> Our silver plate. I'm oh, I'm all upside down. <laughs> nice. And our brass. Nice. So some of our options, right? And thank you, Jill, for making us this beautiful part. Thank you, Jill. All right. Okay, so thank you, um, Kirsten and Julie, for joining me for this part of the video. And um, you can stay on. I would like you to, so we can all say goodbye at the end. And or Julie, maybe you can open another tab to look at um, to look at. If you are seeing like on the TierraCast Facebook, I might be able to see the comments. Oh, and then I might be able to. Then you can. Let's give it a go. Um, did Excellent. you join? Did you join the Great Beat Extravaganza? I did. I did. Okay, actually, do it there. Okay. Watch there, and that's where you can post links and respond, and then we'll catch up on our own page later. I'll check it out. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you guys later. Good. All right, so um, we have two um, tutorials lined up. And I think I was a little bit cocky about the time, but I think we got plenty of time. So I hope that we can get through them both. This is our Lazy Zigzag Bracelet. It's kind of a Tierra Cast classic, one that's very popular in the Pinterest world. And it's a fun project, so we're going to do that. And we're also going to do using the same hook that we use as a closure on the um, lazy zigzag. We're going to do a little bit of seed beading um, around the same hook. And that will be a fun and I hope pretty quick, um, pretty, pretty quick project. Um, so I'm going to switch my camera and we'll get started with those. Um, Julie, if you made it to the Great Beat Extravaganza, page yet. <laughs> okay when you do this would be a good time to um to put in a link for the um the project on our website oh okay i, I I'll, I'll make a note and i you know me i'm not computer techie and facebook <laughs> so I do my you best can do you can do it all right switching my camera switching the camera come on All right, so here is a, a little selection, I mean, a little arrangement of all the parts I need to make this project. Oh, something else important. Um, we're going to do a giveaway. Um, we'll do actually two of them. 
Hold on just a second. We're going to do a giveaway of this kit. Um, whoever comments on the Great Bead Extravaganza page during this section of the video, um, we'll pick a random name at the end of it and we'll be giving away one of these kits to whoever that lucky winner is. And I pulled the uh, instruction card out of it earlier today and then forgot to put the whole thing back together. Otherwise, I would have had a prettier presentation for you guys. But here it is. It's a kit with all the parts and a little instruction card. And uh, that'll be our giveaway for this section. So um, for this project, oh, and this is also just a variation of that project that we kind of liked. We called this one, it's also on our website. We call this one Between Earth and Sky. It's got the same kind of weaving type of process with the leather and the large hole beads. And then this one we finished off with a button. So it was just a nice little variation I wanted to share with you guys. Um, and that one is called Between Earth and Sky, also on our website. So to make... Real quick, yes. um, mm -hmm. I think you're streaming on our Facebook, so there's not comments coming up on the Great Bead Extravaganza. Oh, okay. Whatever's, whatever's right? easier. Yeah. I did okay. share it to the Great Bead Extravaganza page, but whatever works. Okay, let me keep looking. Okay. So to make this project, I have one of our large classic hooks. I have a couple of our six by two millimeter barrel beads, distressed barrel beads, and a cup seven. I should have seven or eight of those. Yes, eight, seven of the four by two millimeter ones. I have eight, I actually gave myself a few more because I might drop one, you never know. Eight okay. of our seven millimeter so, large home nugget beads. I have one of our large classic hooks. Oops, you'll have to have mute that one, Julie. Okay, got it. Beads and a cup, seven, I should have seven or eight of those. Yes, eight. Seven of the four by two millimeter ones. All right, I'll mute you. <laughs> and then um, two of the three hole, large hole um, end bars. Or uh, what do we call these? Let me look at the name of it. Just a three hole bar. It's for uh, like a separator bar. And then I also have two millimeter cord. I have one 14 inch piece and two six and a quarter inch pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take th these three strands of leather. I've got the two shorter ones on the outside and the long one in between. And then I wanna pull the long one out so that I have about four inches of that extended past the ends of the short ones. And then I'm going to take one of the six by two millimeter barrel beads and slide that onto the end of, slide that onto the cords and just park it right there at the ends of the short ones. Now, um, Kirsten was talking about how our pewter is flexible and uh, you know it's a fairly soft metal, so soft enough to be able to crimp it, but it's still very strong. Um, you can crimp these in a couple of different ways. You can use uh, flat nose pliers, they, that works okay. Our favorite is parallel pliers. Not everybody has a pair of those sitting around, but what's wonderful about them is that the pressure comes down in, in parallel fashion instead of angled, like in the, in the flat flats. So I've got my parallel pliers and I'm just gonna crimp those down. I'm gonna turn it around and come at it from both sides. And you could also, that feels like it's a good crimp. It's very secure. I'm not concerned about anything coming loose. If you were, you could have put a little bit of adhesive inside before you crimped it. But I don't think it's necessary. It's just fine the way it is right now. So my next, my next process is to make a little loop at the end. Now this loop will be, this will be where my hook's gonna come in like that. So I, it doesn't need to be too big, just about that is fine. And then I'm going to take this end and wrap it around and just just a little overhand knot right there.
Oops, and something went awry. It didn't work. Let's try again. Aha, I have to... I've made my loop and I'm holding on to that pretty good. And then I looped the end around and then I need to go to put that end of the cord down through the loop from that direction. Then I have my little overhand knot that's wrapped around my loop and then I can tighten that down. And here's where I actually will put a tiny little drop of glue because I want this, uh -huh. I I want this not I to be What's that? Kirsten or Julie, you had something? Sorry, I watched your video on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna tighten that. I have I have enough room in the loop that it'll be easy to manipulate my closure in there. And then I can just cut off the end right, cut off that tip of leather. Next, I'm going to string one of the three whole bars onto the ends. Oops. And just pull that all the way up next to the bead I just crimped. And this is where I'll start adding, adding the other beads. I'm going to actually I need to start on the center cord with one of the nugget beads. And then I'm going to take one of the one of the four by twos. If I can these um, little leather cords are like really unruly. <laughs> they just are jumping out of my hands. So I'm going to take the middle long cord and one of the outside ones and thread on one of the four by two barrel beads. And then we'll do another one of the nugget beads on the center cord. So this is very much a zigzag kind of pattern. And at some point, I don't know if she's been able to do it yet. At some point, Julie will put a link in the comments that goes to this project on our website. And there you can actually download um, a copy. You can download a PDF of this tutorial. All right, so I've got nugget, barrel, nugget, barrel, and this I'm alternating the barrels. And I'm just going to keep up that pattern. I think three more times, four more times. And I'm sorry, I can't be watching your comments closely. Oh, Kate Richburg did just comment that they're going to be adding these parallel pliers to their inventory at beadshop.com. So that's cool. These are really fun pliers to have. And they come in a variety of um, a variety of styles. But just the basic parallel plier, the basic parallel. Whoops. Now, this is what happens when I start looking at the comments instead of looking at what I'm doing. I threaded another one of the barrel beads on before the, I mean, another, I was supposed to have threaded on a nugget bead and I threaded on a barrel bead. So we caught it though, and we're fixing it. And it's looking, it's getting there. When I'm done, I should have strung a total of eight of the little nugget beads and seven of the barrel beads. And I did give myself extras of the barrel beads, so I need to make sure I'm paying attention to my count. Okay, where are we at? All 
All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One last nugget bead on the center cord. And then I'm going to string that second three hole bar. And all of these large hole components, we came out with these, I don't know, a few years ago, but we really designed them with that, with a hole that's a two millimeter uh, minimum. So that because um, leather cord at that time was just so crazy popular and we wanted to offer some products that were easy to string using leather cord. So we came up with a whole kind of series of um uh, beads and components with two with two millimeter holes. So um, we have a good variety to select from. So now I've got all of my beads strung and I've got my second three hole bar. And I think my next step is just to arrange all the, I want these um, three hole bars to be about five inches apart. And that's for like a seven inch bracelet. So if, you know, if you needed a larger bracelet or a smaller one, you would just adjust here accordingly. And then, so I want them about five inches apart. And then later on when we're done, I'll go in and arrange all these and I'll use the um, pliers again to kind of secure those in place. All right, so I'm going to, string on that second six by two millimeter and the six by two millimeter refers to the inside dimension that's how big the opening is in this bead um and you know a seven inch bracelet that's kind of smallish um, I get in trouble sometimes. I do a, a lot of the jewelry design here for our marketing purposes, and I get in, in trouble a lot because I have a very small wrist, so I tend to make make the bracelets very small, and then someone come, someone else comes along and wants to wear it, and they're like, it's too small. So I'm sorry. I just, it's habit. <laughs> All right, so I'm crimping that second six by two millimeter bead. And then I'm actually going to use, I think, some flush cutters to trim these ones off. I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to catch that middle cord. I just want to trim off the outer cord. All right, let's go ahead, before I put the clasp on, let's go ahead and arrange these and crimp them in place. Yes, Donna Hema says, yes, I have a small wrist too. I am not alone, thank you. Oh, and someone else is suggesting um, to use a new stitching component as a separator. That would be interesting. When someone has an interesting suggestion like that, I'm always like, please do that and then share a picture on our Facebook page so we can see how it came out. And someone was asking for stores that sell a lot of tear cast in Canada. We have several. We have Bead FX, we have Kelly's Bead Boutique. Um, John Bead is a, um, is a, oh, hey, look what's happening here. Okay, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but my knot kind of shifted and I had added a little bit of glue there to keep that secure. But I think what I'll do is add a little more so that that sliding doesn't happen and I don't lose the length of my loop. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Hopefully that'll be enough. I can adjust later. And this bracelet got its name because, you know, once you get your, your, so, so that, that your bead sliding doesn't happen. Okay, what's I happening? Lose the Somebody needs to add a little bit more. Okay. Um, when you get all these arranged, it makes kind of a nice little slow zigzag. So that's where the, I can adjust. 
the name came from. All right, and then I can go in and crimp these a little bit. And I don't have to crimp hard. Um, you don't really want to come at this like gangbusters. You don't want to, th in this particular instance, this is one of our pewter um, pieces, pewter finishes, so it's not plated. But our silver and gold and copper, those are all plated. So I would not want to come at this so hard and aggressively that I um, cracked the plating. And it doesn't really require a whole lot of pressure. And I hopefully that Symptom. And it seems like it's okay. So now um, I'm going to add, I'm going to finish by creating another loop on this side. But before I do that, I need to add the, the closed loop of the hook. And then I'm going to do the same thing, just going to make that little loop around and thread the end of the cord through to make a little overhand knot. And I might want to tighten this loop a little more because I don't want, I want it to hold that hook a little bit closer to the bracelet. So I'll make that loop a little bit shorter. And then again with the glue and the tightening. And that is pretty much it. That's all it takes for that bracelet. It's a pretty easy one. All right, so I'm gonna, I've had Julie muted because she's watching the video on the Facebook page and it was creating a bit of an echo. But Julie, I'm gonna unmute you because this is where we get to choose a winner for th this giveaway. I, I'm not able to help. You can. Oh, because you're not even seeing the comments? I was but I couldn't mute the, f oh, you muted me here. It was yeah, because it was, it was such a scramble. I was going oh, okay. between two pages. It was, it, it just wasn't working. And I was trying to talk to you before you muted me and you weren't hearing me. <laughs> I, I couldn't figure it out. Okay. Um, let's see. I need uh, more practice. What's that? I need more practice. Oh, well, can you watch the video on the group page, but just have no sound on that one? I, I couldn't figure it out. Oh, how about you, Kirsten? I probably can. Give me a second. I'll figure it out. All right. So Kirsten's going to figure that out so we can choose a winner for the Lazy Zigzag Bracelet Kit. And when we do pick that winner, um, what I'd like for that winner to do is just to um, send a... A direct message to the Tierra Cast Facebook page. If you go to the Tierra Cast Facebook page, you can send us a message, and I'm the one that gets those. So um, I'll get your message, and we'll find out your shipping details so that we can send this off to you. All right, so let's clean up this project, and we'll switch to the next one. Uh, someone's asking what type of glue did I use? I used super new glue. Um, this came out a few years ago and has been very popular with people who work with leather, who make leather jewelry. It works really nice with leather. It is a cyanoacrylate super glue type of formula. Um, and I am not sure exactly what makes it work so well with leather, but it's a good one. It's not too brittle like some super glue formulas. It's my so, favorite glue. What's that? It's my favorite glue. It is a good glue. It's like a super glue, but it gives it's forgiving. It gives you a little bit of time to get that placed where you need it. Mm -hmm. 
All right. All right, so how long? That took me only about 25 minutes, yay, which means that we should have plenty of time to work on this project. So this is um, a project that is brand new to our website. And um, it's called our Alex Beaded Earrings. And it's called Alex because they were inspired by a, um, a designer named uh, Alexander Thomas. Is it Thomason? Thomas and yeah. Alexander. She used to own a bead store here near us, and but she's just a very well-regarded um, seed bead designer and a really wonderful person. And she did a pair of these that um, is wire wrapped on uh, on our hooks, and we just loved them so much. And we just ran with the inspiration. We created the seed beaded version. <clears throat> so, Kirsten, how are you doing? Any? Are we able to pick a winner yet? Kirsten, how are you doing? Are we able to pick yes, a winner? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. You just okay. for a minute. Um, I choose Patty Perkins. Patty Perkins? Spell it for us. P-A-T-T-Y. Uh-huh. P-E-R-K-I-N-S. Perkins. Fabulous. Congratulations, Patty. Um, if you go to the TierraCast Facebook page and send me a private message, I'll follow up with you and we'll get your mailing address. So, yay. Thank you, Kirsten. Kirsten, are you able to read the comments now? You know, I can see some of them, but not all of them. Huh, that's interesting. Well, we're all learning this, you know, if there's anything, I think Andrew mentioned this, that if there's anything that this quarantine has done, it has forced all makers to figure out all this tech stuff so that we can do lives and that we can work from home. So um, it's Julie been- Julie and I are pros like you are, Tracy. <laughs> and I wouldn't call myself a pro. I'm just barely, we're all just barely figuring this stuff well, out. The pandemic made me come back to Facebook a little bit and I've been not- doing it. So I'm definitely out of practice. Oh, well, I'm, I appreciate that you're willing to jump in here with us. Okay, so um, we don't have an official kit for this particular jewelry design. We do sell the lazy zigzag bracelet as a kit. Um, remember, we are a wholesale company. So to find our products retail, you have to search um, like some of the other ven some of the other presenters for this event are Goody Beads and Kelly's Bead Boutique and the bead place and bead the bead shop. Gallery com. and beadshop.com. So they all sell our products retail. Um, but we don't have this as a kit yet. We may down the road, but I did package up all the parts and the instructions. And um, so we are also going to do a giveaway of that. <clears throat> and Trish Perry says, oh, I am oh. doing great. Thank you, Trish. <laughs> That's a catchphrase in the group. We're all just doing great. So, oh, you know what? I don't want to use white because I don't think it is going to be visible enough for you guys. So I'm going to use some black thread. And I really meant, really, really, really meant to um, have my needle pre-strung before I started this. Just so I could avoid that. I'm forcing you guys to watch me try and thread a needle but I forgot to do it, so. So um, for this project, you need your favorite beading thread. So that might be uh, one, of the, one of the braided or thermal threads like Fireline or Wildfire, or it might be one of the nice nylon beading threads. I did do <clears throat> this original version with some nylon thread in a color that matched the beads, because that was fun. Um, but I'm going to use the fire line that I just dropped on the floor. But yay, found it. Um, and I'm going to use the black because I think that you guys might be able to see that fairly easily, maybe. This is one of my, when I'm working with seed beads, this is one of my little tricks. I keep a magnet on my work surface so that... I can stick my, um, somebody's making a lot of noise. Um, so that I can stick my needle to it and won't keep dropping it. 
Dropping the needle doesn't seem to be the problem this time. Dropping the thread is. Huh. All right, we're just gonna cut some more. I have a very, the light is low in here right now because I have it set up so it, the video's good. Um, and my carpet is dark, so there's no way I'm gonna find that piece of thread. It's just not gonna happen. So I'm cutting a piece that's about um, two feet long. And that should be enough to uh, get us through this one of the earrings. I did just see that Patty Perkins mm -hmm. wants us to give Kirsten a virtual hug for her. Okay. Now I saw that on my phone, so maybe that's the secret weapon. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Let me pay attention. <laughs> this is what I so wanted to you guys not have to have you guys sit through is me trying to thread this. The comments are coming in so quickly that I can almost not capture them. I am just tying this in a, um, oh, I forgot to switch back my camera, guys. Sorry about that. Let's get you back on this so you can see what I'm doing. Technical difficulties. There we are. So what I'm doing that you might have missed is I'm just tying one end of this thread to my component in just a double overhand knot. Tightening that down. And then I'm just going to move that. I think I wrote the directions so that, um, which again, there's a downloadable version. I posted it. Excellent. So um, I think I started that at this end, but it doesn't matter. And I think actually I'm going to prefer to start it at this end right now. So this is a simple brick stitch technique. It's, um, it's an easy beginner stitch. The first thing I'm going to do is string two beads onto the thread. And then I'm actually going to see if I can, there's a little trick Danielle Wicks brought me, taught me about hiding the knot. I'm going to thread the tail through the first bead and get, once I get both of those up on there, then I'm going to, you can see that I've got the two, the two beads. There's the tail that's kind of coming out of that, the first bead. And then I'm going to thread my needle between into the hook, in, through the hook, and then up through that second bead. Whoops, where'd it go? Tracy, could you tell them again what kind of thread you're using? Right now I'm using a nylon, um, just a nylon beading thread. It's probably a 1G. It's one of these ones where there's no label. So it's, um, and then I have, I was showing some 1G nylon beading thread, which is just really lovely, but I couldn't get the, I couldn't get, find the end of the thread. And I started with um, wildfire bonded thread, but for some reason I couldn't get it on my needle, so I abandoned it. So I really, I'm doing all this on purpose just to show you guys, you can use whatever thread you want. I'm kidding, but. <laughs> People are asking what size bead. <laughs> All right, so I just picked up another bead and have threaded that on and threaded my needle through the hook again. And now I've got three little beads on there. And I'm going to make sure they're all tucked up close to that, the top of the, the end of the closed part of the hook. And then, so I've got three beads, now I'm picking up one of our beaded, what we call our beaded seed beads. And again, bring the needle through the hook and up through the bead. Tracy, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I can. Um, what size are the seed beads? They're size eight. And our um, 
seed bead, beaded seed bead is also a size eight. That's correct. We designed this to kind of work alongside size eight seed beads. I don't know if there's a technical dimension of size eight. I don't know. Um, I actually think there's variation in different makes of seed beads. So, um, but yes, we do call ours a size eight seed bead as well. So you can see, I'm just gonna keep going along. It's a pretty simple thing. I do want to make sure that I'm keeping good thre thread tension and that I make sure my beads are nice and next to each other, nice and snugged up next to each other. And I'm just going to repeat that pattern a few more times until I get to the other end. And what would be fun is I really wanted to make another sample. Whoops, I lost my bead. I really wanted to make a sample showing another layer of beads. And I'll actually, I, I have a whole tray of um, of brick stitched jewelry using our some of our ring components, which I'll show you guys when we're all done. And some of those have multiple layers of beads. I really wanted to do an example here on this project, but I didn't have a time to get it done. Someone's asking if you can zoom in a little bit. I can try and get a little closer. <laughs> Um, I can't really bring my camera in any closer because um, I need room for my hands to move. Maybe people just need to zoom in on their device. That could be. So all the people that are asking for you to zoom in, we uh -huh. can, um, they can access the project sheet. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And that has diagrams. Yeah. Oops. So just go to tiercast.com and look for inspirations and you'll find it. I got a little knot, so bear with me. We got to untie a knot. You're being so human, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do the second pair of glasses trick again. Well, it's not three pairs. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Kirsten, did you have something else you were, oh, um, Julie was going to ask you if you had more interesting manufacturing stories for us. She might have muted us. She's got a million of them. Oh, my goodness. Well, let me see. Let's go to the comments and fill in there. Oh, Kirsten's on, on there making comments. Let's see. Uh, boy, a lot of people relate to the double glasses, I'll tell you that. And everybody hates getting a knot in the thread. Well, and that's why I usually like to use Fireline, uh, the braided and bonded beading threads, because I don't get knots as much. Somebody says use two needles to untie the knot. Oh, that sounds like something I would need to practice with. <laughs> and I'm not sure you guys are willing to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Somebody's asking how to find the live events, and they should be able to go to the Beat Extravaganza. Um, they, should all just, they should all just be popping up on the Beat Extravaganza yeah. page. So join the page. Yes, not join the page. On it. And you should oh. be getting notifications for everybody's. And um, I'm making progress, you guys. You might not be able to see it, but I'm making progress. Kirsten says she loves undoing knots and she should throw a mask on and come in and rescue you. <laughs> I do. I love undoing knots and undoing chain. Oh, That's Pamela just Hawkins. Bizarre. That's bizarre. Pamela came on. Pamela Hawkins says she misses uh, her tribe. Tell her happy belated birthday. She's listening to you. She's watching. Oh, yeah, she's heard it from you. All right, so I got the knot out. Just going to keep going. Oh, Sarah, Sarah Ayler has said you might have to refresh on the page a few times. To, to oh, get the, she's suggesting for the videos to get the video live videos. 
Oh, right. Because if they've had their screen up, but a new post isn't popping up, they might need yeah. to refresh. That was I a good means. Yeah. Oh, somebody says it's encouraging that the master gets knots. <laughs> I am not a master seed beater. I have to, I'll admit right now that um, my job here at TerraCast is using when I'm doing the jewelry, when I'm, wear, when I'm wearing the jewelry designer hat. Um, it's about showing our parts in as many ways as we can and with as many different techniques as we can. So what that means is I, I'm never an expert in anything. I'm always just, <laughs> I'm always just a kind of a learner with every technique. I do like seed beating though. Um, I do it sometimes at home when I'm making projects for people. I do enjoy it. I'm sure it's much more relaxing when you're not doing a video. <laughs> I'm not finding this horribly stressful. It's going okay. I mean, I don't know what I don't know what the experience is like for everybody else, but it's not going to do that. Um, I bet yeah. a lot of people can relate, you know, like I can knit I can knit a scarf, but that's it. Or I can crochet one thing, you know. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, everybody's right. relating to this. Yeah. All right, so I'm at the point where I'm getting close to the end, so I want to kind of go along and tighten everything up and move all my beads down a little bit. You can see that there's some looseness here. And we still have about 20 minutes, so that's enough time to wrap this up and show you guys the other um, examples I had set aside. And we still have one more, get the, the second giveaway to decide on, too. Somebody said that if the outside of that clasp were, was flattened a little bit, the beads would sit very nicely. That and is true. I challenged someone to get their hammer out and just flatten it a little bit. It probably would work. All right, so getting close to the end. One of the other things I like about um, the bonded and braided beading threads is that um, there, this? I find the nylon beading threads very slippery, which I think can work well. Oops, what happened? Um, can work well, work it in favor in some ways, but in some ways I find it it makes it hard to keep my thread tension. So if anybody has any goodness, if anybody has any tips about that, I'm happy to. Listen to them. I've got um, my th my needle went w under one of the threads way over here, so I gotta untangle that. People are really loving the designs, and somebody said, thought they would look beautiful with little gemstones. Yes, absolutely, and um, and faceted. Goodness, um, check glass beads yeah. is really nice. Yeah, this idea. So I had got my thread under one of the other and th the thread on the other side. So I had to take my needle off to get that out. So here we go again. <laughs> thread in the needle. Uh oh. Um, uh -oh. Kirsten, well, I'm just I have faith that you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, like a like a master. <laughs> what were you asking Kirsten about? Oh, I was or just going to comment. Let's try to keep her entertaining us. She's so entertaining. All right. Well, she did mention when that person uh, suggested that the clasp would be nice if it was a little flatter for the seed beads. Uh -huh. Kirsten went on and mentioned that all the new hammered uh, pieces that we introduced this year were made uh -huh. that way so that the seed beads would set, or the beads would set nicely around them for right. this. I should probably 
put a link to those. You can let's, do that. Let's, yeah, I'm getting all fancy now. This is my last bead, everybody. Yay! Thank you Yay. all for bearing with me. Whoops. <laughs> and I missed it completely. Okay. So there we go, guys. It wasn't that hard. There were snafus. I do still think that this is a great technique for seed bead beginners. Um, it's just, it's a fun one. And as I was saying, you can layer. Um, but let me finish this off so that I can show you guys the rest of the, um, the examples. So I'm going back through, down through the second bead. And then I'm going to come up, up and around. But before I do that, I'm going to thread my needle under and then thread my needle through the hoop so that I have a little half hitch knot right there. Oh, and I just broke my thread. All right. So I will show you guys how to finish that off on the other end. Because what I, what I needed to do there was weave back through that second bead, tie a little knot, and then come back up. Um, but I broke my thread, so I'm going to show you how to do that at the tail end, which you would need to do anyway. So let's just pretend the first side went just fine, and now we're going to weave in the tail thread. We can do that. Mm -hmm. These scissors aren't working so great. There's my other ones. It's a good thing, Tracy, that you're cool as a cucumber. Yeah, mm -hmm. no cute. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Any other interesting comments or things to respond to? Beeswax is good for threading needles. It sure is. I'm going to get some. Um, yeah, they're a good point. They're really going, there's so many, and they're just, they're very hard to keep up with. Um, but people are loving this design. Do people... Um, Go ahead. Do they still make thread heaven? That's a question. It, I, seed beaters out there might recognize this stuff called thread heaven, but I think I heard that it was discontinued. Does anybody know if that's still on the market? It's a wonderful thing. It's kind of like beeswax for for settling down your threads. Um, and I'm just not sure if it's out there in the market anymore. Someone's curious about what the color of the beads you're working with. What color oh that? gosh! Yeah, blue. I, blue. <laughs> the blue. Our our friend Gretchen um, came on and um, uh -huh. from Peace of Mind, uh -huh. and um, she said you're wicked fast. I am. That's I've heard that. I've heard that before. <gasps> thread Heaven sounds heavenly. Somebody said. Oh, somebody said Thread Heaven did retire. I thought that might have been the case. The owner retired. Okay. So we kind of know a little bit about that lately. Mm-hmm. We do, we do. All right. So trying again. I'm going to come back down through that bead. Around the hook. And then before I come up to the bead again, I'm going to loop under the thread, loop my needle through the loop I just made. So it turns into a little half hitch knot. And then I can thread back up through the bead. Maybe. Kathleen Carr is saying that um, Thread Heaven is on Etsy, that you can find it on oh, Etsy. So maybe old inventory. Okay, so guys, I'm going to spare you. I don't want to, 
keep belaboring this, but ideally I would come back down the, this first beat again, do the loop and the half hitch knot thing again, and that's where I would finish. But I think that you guys have got the idea. Um, and if you do download the PDF, then um, that all those step-by-steps are in there. So even if my demonstration was not perfect, um, the step-by-steps are nice and clear, so. Oh my goodness, so, Jamie Yoshida just texted me to tell me to tell you to use a pair of pliers and mush the end of that fire line next time. To use what? To use a pair of pliers and mush that flatten the end of the thread. See, people always have great suggestions. Yeah. So, you guys, I just want to show you a few examples of um, jewelry and some of our other products that you can use to do this technique. Um, so this teardrop, that's this size teardrop, has two layers of the brick stitching. And we have a couple of um, examples here that Danielle Wex ma made for us. So she did one here with just a single layer. Here's one I did with size 11 seed beads. And Danielle's done a couple with um, doing the brick stitch inside the rings. So that is also a really fun, um, fun technique that you could try. And this one, I think we call this our mosaic bracelet. This is also on the website with the step-by-step -step instructions. And this one will be very soon with the larger ring. So um, I'm gonna switch my camera back and Someone, Julie or Kirsten, um, you guys, uh, one of you can pick a winner for us. Go for it, Kirsten. Okay, I'm looking. Hold on, give me a second here. Am I supposed to, were they supposed to comment something in particular? No, no, just anybody who commented during that segment. The, um, uh, oh, great. Yeah. Well, what do we call this? I right? choose. Hold on. Joanne. Let me that up on the Joanne Bright Brown. Joanne. Bright Brown. Bright Brown. Bright Brown. Bright Brown. in the name. Joanne Bright Brown. Okay, Joanne, please um, send me a message on the TRCast Facebook page so I can get your shipping information. And congratulations. Wow. Thanks, guys. Well done, Tracy. Well <laughs> done. Thank you for your patience. So cool under pressure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, but working on this. Um, this great beat extravaganza collaboration with all the designers and the businesses has been so uplifting and so fun. Um, and today's just the first day. Um, <laughs> Andrew started this morning and then there was Heather and um, up next is Kay Goss of Stars, Beads and Clasps. And hopefully you read her bio on the Beat Extravaganza Facebook page. If you click at the top, under, or no, it's not the top, the top, it's on the right side. There's a little section where it shows you topics. And one of the topics is um, information about the presenters. And so you should be able to find Kay's um, little bio in there, what she posted. And she's just a sweet person. And um, her store, Bead Star, uh, Stars, Bees, and Clasps, is a customer of ours. So um, hope, I think she's got lots of fun. Kay, since she was little. A teenager. <laughs> she, she said she started with um, her mom with the business as a teenager. So mm -hmm. um, I think she's got lots of um, good stuff to share with you guys. And I'm going to, my plan this whole time was to cut out a little bit early so you guys can take a break from the screens and get something to eat or drink and take a restroom break. Um, it is important to not just keep staring at the, a screen or a device for hours on end. So um, we're going to cut out a few minutes early and we thank you guys so, so much for participating in the great beat extravaganza. Thanks. Absolutely. Bye everyone.